Hello everyone and welcome to Beyond Tutorials Part 9. Today we'll be showing off more AI and how to make your AI more efficient. The reason why this is important is because your AI, sh well you should have a lot of AI and enemies in MMO game and you want them to be as efficient as possible because you're going to have a lot of them. So that's the purpose of this tutorial to get you set up here and as you saw last tutorial the world um, high A times 8 was just running like like mad last tutorial and you don't want that to happen. You want to have as less high messages as possible. So the first thing when I'm making it, um, it when I'm making AI, I want to be able to switch it on and off. So to do that, I do a variable. And this variable can be called what you want, but up here as you can see I called it intelligence. This intelligence equals zero. And you want to switch it on and off with two values. I use 0 and 1, and this is a good programming practices for your non-programmers. Because 0 and 1 is for a lot of languages when you just want to return true or false. So 1 is, should be equal, is a true value and 0 false. So our intelligence starts as 0, so that is false. So we're making a proc down here called AI, and we're just cutting and pasting the current AI code into here. And this is because it's basically the same code, we just want to use it under a certain specific event. And we will be showing, I'll be showing the other event that activates this AI later. So instead of while um, circ, while it's alive, we don't want to do while it's alive, we want to do while its intelligence is on. So while its intelligence is on, intelligence has to equal to 1. Because that means the intelligence is true. And we also don't need this code anymore for burmob slash m in view. That is because this because it's just we're gonna activate um, how to find how to find the location of the mob later. And we also want to make sure the intelligence equals to zero when we start resetting our mob. So that's what I do down there. And yeah, more on the, so we want to make, we, let me just wait a bit. So yeah, now, now we make this, the sleep variable equal to 10, because now what this code should be doing is it's not cycling through looking for a mob every one millisecond. Now it's cycling through and it's looking for a mob to tap. So now we erase our old sleep and we create a new sleep. And this sleep is equal to 10, so now we're just waiting every one second look for a mob to attack. We don't want to find a mob to find to find a direction anymore. We don't want to find the enemy doesn't want to find the mob anymore. Because it'll find the mob in a different event, and I'll explain this event soon. So what event do we uh, want to find it? Do we want the mob to start moving to a player? Well, I usually make a turf. I call it AI turf. And I just made the icon states equal to my current grass. But you could e make it equal to nothing or zero. And if you go on the map, if you go on the map and you go to your little editing, your icons, if you press, I think, control and then your click, you will overlay it on top. So if you want just a blank AI that doesn't have an image, you can overlay it on top of your current turf. So it's just going into the, the current map interface and control and then click. So now we want to do enter. Just fixing a few errors here. I misspelled intelligence, and I put on um, parentheses when I didn't need to. So enter. Enter is defined when something enters a turf. This is a proc that only works for turfs. It's not really a proc. It's just something that happens, more like a function that happens. And this function can have arguments in it. Usually the arguments I have in it is a mob or an object. 
we'll call this argument var slash mob slash m for the time being. Usually what I do. Okay, there we go. So now we start using the code if m.client. We want to make sure that the mob is a client. So if a player enters this AI, and then we want to search for the enemy. The we want the player to search for the enemy once he enters this turf AI. To do for mob, we sense it in his current view. So the three stands for how many tiles outwards of his view. And the M stands for um, the person we want to see around the view. So we want to see around the player's view. You can look at view in the beyond references again to see more of what it does and what its capabilities are. If you're confused, you can always contact me too. So view just, again, just starts from the center M. M's the center, and the integer stands for how many tiles outwards. So after we get the view straightened out, the next part we probably want to do is trying to get the, the target equal to null. Not the player, the enemy's target is equal to null. We want to make sure the enemy's target is equal to null so that we don't run into situations where the enemy wants to attack you even though it's attacking someone else. So we make want to make sure that it doesn't have a target. Otherwise, if it did have a target, it would still come attack you even if it was attacking some other player was having combat with them. And you just don't want to do that. So then we set our walk towards. Now this is where we now set our walk towards. So once we enter this turf, now we want to make the enemy walk towards the player. And this is why we don't no longer need the walk towards in our while loop. Um, we have a bunch of conditions. We have walk towards. We start from the enemy to the mob and then the speeds. You can look up that in the beyond references. And now we want to set their target so it's no longer equal to null. And we want to put their intelligence on. And then we want to activate their AI component. And then we want to return one. And why are we returning one? We're returning one because enter requires a return value. If you don't give it a return value, it will return false. And if it returns false, that means you can will not be able to move through a turf, through this turf. You will not be able to move through turf AI. It'll be dense. And returning one means that if enter gets returned into one, then you can move through the turf. You can just experiment with that yourself. Just return zero and see what happens. And then return one and see what happens for a better explanation than what I gave you. Basically, enter one allows you to move through the turf. Return one, I mean. So now just compile it. And now we got an error. We're just going to make the intelligence equal to one. I mean, equal to zero when we die. This is so when we die, our AI can stop. Our AI compile component will stop because the while loop requires the AI to equal to one. By making it equal to zero, the AI will stop. And also, this error will not work if you use the killed variable because killed is part of the mob tree. So what we had to do is we had to create a new object that was part of the enemy tree and the enemy equals to killed and then we can do so we do something like killed dot intelligence equals zero it won't work because um, the mob tree does not have the intelligence variable 
but the mob slash enemy does have the intelligence available. So now we run it. And it doesn't work. That's because we haven't set the AI turf and we haven't put it in our map yet. We're just gonna do this little bit of code in the attacking, in the player's attacking uh, verb. This is so we can... This is only so if we can, we can activate the intelligence through attacking. So when you attack the... You attack the enemy, it'll activate the AI, even if you don't have any AI turfs nearby. This could be used for passive, aggressive enemies, so you don't have any AI turfs nearby. And you just want to punch them, it'll activate the AI. I'm just adding some extra um, conditions here to make sure that it has a target, to make sure that its intelligence equals zero and then we put on its intelligence with the proc. So we run it, go to the map, we'll uh, just make little AI squares. So now we are just testing the efficiency of our code. As you can see, unlike last time, instead of having these infinite K times 8 going through and just being a mess and a monster, we now only have five, 5 of them outputting, which is really great. And they're not constantly outputting while we're away from the enemy. Uh, it'll stop outputting when the creature dies, it'll stop outputting when the creature resets to its position. And no code will be running while you're moving. It'll only code will only start running when you move into this turf AI, which only should be in a few locations. And this AI, like I have right here, if I became AFK besides an enemy that was going to spawn soon, the enemy wouldn't activate and wouldn't start um, act using resources on a player that shouldn't be using resources since he's AFK. So this. I don't know, can be just being a dead horse, but it's I don't know, greater efficiency that way. So people may have discovered greater efficiency than I have, but this is the way that I currently use and the way that I found the best way to be for me. And I hope you guys learned a lot from this and understand why this is efficient and why it's important to have efficient code. Because once you start making a bigger project, this will be a big problem if you don't nip it in the butt fast. So thank you for watching, have a good day, leave any comments, if you have any questions you can comment me on my Beyond site too, Dante V Fenris, capital D, capital B, capital F. So thank you for watching and have a good day.